Today we're going to be going over the StarkNet airdrop guide step by step who have raised over $250 million. Links for everything in this tutorial are going to be in the description down below. However, if you want to stay up to date with StarkNet, you could just go to their ecosystem page and this is where you're going to find all their dApps, all their bridges, everything. The main things that we're focused on are bridges, DeFi and NFT. So let's get right into it. The first step is going to be downloading two different wallets. The first one, I assume everybody has it, is MetaMask. If you don't know how to use this, I'm going to put a tutorial for it in the description down below. However, you're also going to need a second wallet because StarkNet is not compatible with Ethereum virtual machine. And for here, we have two options. The first option, Argent. This is the one I am going to use for this tutorial. The second option is Bravos. Both of these are fine. They work pretty much the same. They both have mobile apps. They both have browser extensions and they both work with every single website we are going to go through in this tutorial. I just chose Argent because I already had it downloaded. Once both wallets are created, we're going to need to fund our StarkNet wallet. So you're going to head over to the StarkGate bridge and connect both your Ethereum wallet and your StarkNet wallet. You're also going to want to make sure you are on the StarkNet mainnet. And from there, you could fund your wallet. Like I said, if you want to do all the steps, it can cost you up to $50. So I'm just going to put 0.04 for fun. When I tested this bridge in particular, I used 0.02 ETH. The bridge fee 4.02 was 78 cents. The gas fee when Gui was at 20 was $3.36. And it takes roughly five to seven minutes to receive your money once the transaction is approved. So if you're good with this, you would just click transfer, approve the transaction and wait for your money to come in. Now, while the main bridge you're going to want to use is Startgate, there are other bridging options. And some of the reasons you would use multiple bridges are to have more transaction volume, more bridging volume, more contract interactions, and so on. But when it comes to Orbiter, a lot of people are trying to get the airdrop. So I like to use Orbiter with as many chains as I can. It's also a cheaper and faster option compared to most bridges. In this case, it is cheaper than Startgate. So once again, for 0.02, it cost me $2.22 in bridge fees and $1.14 in gas. So it was a cheaper alternative. Step three in the tutorial, we're going to want to perform some swaps as well as add to liquidity pools. A lot of people say you don't need to add to liquidity pools. It wasn't like a requirement for Arbitrum. However, it is more contract interactions. It's more volume. It's more transactions. So I tend to do it on the main sites, but it's completely up to you. So first off, we connect our wallet. We make sure we're on the StarkNet mainnet. We would just put the amount we want to convert. We select a token. It's going to autofill. You could adjust the slippage if you want. And then we're just going to click swap, confirm swap and run the transaction. Once you've received your money, if you want to pool again, you don't have to do this in the same day. You could spread it out over weeks, months, however long you want. You're just going to click pool. You would click create pair, select the token you want to use. In my case, it's ETH to USDT put in the amount you want to add in liquidity. It's going to automatically fill the USDT amount, click supply, confirm supply and run the transaction. Transactions take like roughly one minute on StarkNet. Now you could leave your money in for weeks, for months, just so you know you get that pool interaction. It doesn't just look like you're farming. Once you're ready to pull your money out, you just go back to pool. You might have to refresh the page for your pooled funds to show up. And then it should look like this. You just click manage and then you would do remove liquidity, set the amount to max, remove, and again, run the transaction. So if we go back to our price sheet here, if you did all three actions, it's gonna cost you without slippage, a dollar and 63 cents. If you only did the swap, it's going to cost you 43 cents. Next, we go to my swap. You connect your wallet, you make sure you're on the main net, and we're gonna swap from Ethereum once again into USDT. You would just put in the amount you want to swap, click swap, and confirm the transaction. If you want to change the slippage, you would just click the cog here and then you're able to select a percentage or put in a custom percentage. Once your swap has gone through, if you want to add to a pool, you would go to pools. Once again, select the tokens that you wanna pool with, put in the amount you want to add to the pool and click add liquidity and confirm our transaction and simply wait. Once it goes through, your screen should look like this. When you're ready to pull out, you would just click withdraw 
do max, remove, and once again, confirm the transaction. Now, similar to Jedi Swap, this one was $1.68. And if you just wanted to do the swap, it was 46 cents. The final swap that everybody is doing is 10K swap. You would just, once again, connect your wallet, switch to the mainnet, and then you select the token you wanna do, enter an amount, and click swap. Once you're ready to add to a pool, if you want to, you would click pool and it's the exact same steps that we just did. You would just click add liquidity and from here you could enter whatever amount you want to add to this pool, confirm swap and run the transaction. And once it goes through to see your pools, you would just click my pools. You could see it here. And once you're ready to take your money out, you click withdraw, you slide this over to whatever percentage you want to pull out, approve, confirm and you can get your money. Now this was the most expensive option compared to the other two. This one was $2.04. If we just did the swap though, it was 46 cents. So on par with the other two swaps. Now you'll notice the only steps in green are the swaps. Like I said, this is the main thing other people are doing and not necessarily pooling. I do the pooling, you don't have to. And there are four other swaps we're gonna quickly look at. But like I said, the three main ones that people are doing are Jedi Swap, My Swap, and 10K Swap. I'm just trying to do more than everybody else and have the better odds of qualifying. So the other swaps I personally did, which I'm not gonna go through each one because it's really simple. You just enter the amount and click swap, are Sith Swap, Stark X, Avenue. There's also Protoss.org, but no matter what I did, what slippage, I wasn't able to get a transaction to go through. However, on all four of these sites, I'm not adding to the pools because the TVL is really low. So I'm not gonna be locking on these websites. I'm just gonna use them to do a swap. And there's also a swap within the Argent wallet. If you click the arrows here, where you could swap to any token, I also did this. And the total cost for the three swaps that actually worked, plus the Argent wallet was $2.06. Finally, we want to do stuff with NFTs, mint, buy, sell. Unfortunately, most of these are not marketplaces. Even some of the marketplaces they had listed, such as Mint Square and Aspect, are no longer working here you could see they shut it down on june 30th however there are some marketplaces that do work like flexing.gg here you would just go to collections you would try to find the cheapest collection possible i'm going to click one at random but really look for the cheapest one possible and you're going to filter by price low to high you would just click one and then from there you would do buy now and if you want it approve the transaction now when you click the lowest ones in the list typically you're going to see price failure predicted because a lot of people are trying to buy it so you might have to scroll a little bit higher in the list now once the transaction goes through you can go to your profile and from here, you're gonna see all your NFTs. And what you can do is you can go list an NFT for whatever price you want. I want 5,000 ETH for gorillalabs.stark, list now, and you would process the transaction. Now, another marketplace I was able to find is Unframed. Same thing, you just go to collections, you find the cheapest option possible, you click it, and you would just do buy now and approve the transaction. And then you can go to your profile and list an NFT. Here, I would just click list now. I would enter a price. I want 5,000 ETH for this NFT list now and approve the transaction. So these are really cheap options. The fee was exactly the same, $1.71 on both exchanges. The NFT is the most expensive part, but the purchasing fee was 0.45 and the listing fee was 15 cents. Now the most expensive part of this tutorial is going to be your .stark domain. This is like an ENS name. Like I said, these are gonna be $17 to do. So it's really up to you if you wanna do this or not. It does, I guess, improve your odds of not being labeled a Cybel. However, I don't think it's necessary to do this. But for the sake of it, I did it. If we go with a short name, let's say CCC, you could see it's really expensive. We're gonna lower it to one year, but it's 0.15 ETH. Definitely do not do this, okay? You wanna go for a longer name, and you're gonna see it's 0.009, which is still over $16, but it's much better than 0.15, which is over $100. So from here, you would just do register from L2, follow the steps, just confirm and confirm in your wallet. I already did this, so I don't wanna mint again and spend another $20, but you get the point. Let me know if you liked it, whatever feedback you have in the description or the comments down below if I ended up posting this on Twitter, and even which airdrops you wanna see me do next. I appreciate all feedback, even negative comments.